Good evening, I'm political editor Dennis Walsh. This is Politics Unplugged and State Senator Raquel Turan served as chair of Arizona's Democratic Party and was minority leader, elected minority leader in January. But this weekend, she announced she is stepping back from that leadership position to explore a run for Congress. She joins us now to talk about that. And I want to thank you very much for being here. But before we start getting into things, um, let's, let's talk a little bit about why you're deciding to explore a run for Congress, and, and specifically, why are you deciding to step back from a leadership position to look at it? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. This is my first time in well, Politics Unplugged. It's, first of many, we hope. <laughs> I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> and you know, my journey here in uh, Arizona politics starts where I grew up. I grew up on the border, uh, mm -hmm. on a street that divides the United States and Mexico. Mm -hmm. And as I grew up and I understood how political the border was, I decided to get involved in Arizona politics. And uh, for the last 16 years, I've been engaged in our communities, ensuring mm -hmm. that Latinos, youth, women are part of the decision-making process. And in that journey, I was um, in the forefront of ousting Joe Arpaio, Russell mm -hmm. Pierce off after SB 1070, yeah, yeah. Uh, protecting the Affordable Care Act, and really involved in the progressive movement. In the last two years, like you said, I was the chair of the Arizona Democratic Party, and we're so proud of the work that we did there. So I often share that uh, many times I was outside the state capitol with a mm -hmm. megaphone and I traded it for a microphone, mm -hmm. and now uh, I'm exploring the possibility of uh, taking that leadership and taking the next microphone yeah, in Congress. And, and if, if I remember right, I think you really did get your start kind of in those protests, those anti-1070 protests, and they were some really big, massive protests. For, for people who weren't living here in the Valley at the time, they were really big demonstrations after that bill passed. It was a national um, exposure, and like you were part of the people who helped organize a lot of that and got that going. That really got your start in politics. Well, you know, it was actually 2006 when huge marches in downtown okay. Phoenix happened in support of comprehensive immigration reform. There I got connected with an organization called Mi Familia Vota. Mm -hmm. And the theme of that march was today we march, tomorrow we vote. Mm -hmm. And so I really took that theme to heart. and. Uh, uh, it's been a, a journey of engaging specifically Latinos in the decision-making process. Yeah, let, let's talk a little bit about immigration now. President Joe Biden last week had announced some big changes coming on immigration, specifically to asylum. Um, he is going to make it much harder for people seeking asylum to come here um, and, and ask for that. Basically, it's a policy where that if you go through a, a second, third country, um, if you haven't been able to show that you were denied, uh, you know, uh, residency in that country, you, you're not eligible for asylum here. A lot of Democrats are outraged by this. A lot of immigration advocates are outraged by this. They say this is just another Trump-esque policy. What do you think? Look, look, I think that for the last... 30 years we've been advocating for comprehensive immigration reform. And comprehensive immigration reform includes a pathway for citizenship, for dreamers, and for many people who have been here in this country for many, many years. But it also has a component of addressing issues at the border. It has a component of addressing uh, worker, worker rights. And so it's important that we address this issue as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I think that there really is that political will. Mm -hmm. uh, if we put some of the most extreme people aside and people stop fear mongering with uh, the issue of immigration, we can get to work. And we've seen it uh, be led from uh, uh, here, even our, our, our now uh, late uh, Senator John, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. John McCain. John right? McCain, <laughs> our, our John McCain. Not a problem, not a but problem. But no, of course, uh, uh, I think like there is that uh, willingness to work on comprehensive immigration reform from uh, both sides of the so, aisle. But are, are you at all disappointed, though, Joe Biden is, cr is making it harder for asylum seekers to get in here? Again, they're calling this a Trump-esque policy. Is this disappointing? I mean, obviously, someone who's you know, been on the front lines of immigration for such a long time. Is it disappointing? You know, I, I think that... Uh, Joe Biden is looking at the whole picture. Okay. Of course, we want to expedite uh, the, the possibility if somebody has uh, is seeking asylum to come to this country as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But again, the issue here is comprehensive immigration reform, and that needs to be addressed in Congress. And I'm sure that the president is ready to sign a good piece of legislation. Right. Yeah. But you did ask earlier uh, about stepping down from leadership, and I didn't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make it very clear that we have 
have a united caucus mm -hmm. of 14 Democrats. There is continuity uh, at, at the at, within the Democratic caucus in our state legislature, and I am really looking forward to making sure that our Democratic agenda moves forward. Okay, and just, let me get your thoughts then, just in general. Um, you know, it, it, very clearly, it's starting to look like Joe Biden is ramping up, gearing up for a second run in Congress, or for, for, for the White House. Uh, thoughts on his overall job rating? What would you give him? What would, how would you grade him? And do you think he should be running again, or should he be letting some, stepping aside and let somebody else? Wow, Joe Biden did an amazing job coming out of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, he and, and our members of Congress, and if we remember, it was all Democrats, moved on solutions to get people out of this crisis that, uh, that was the pandemic. So mm -hmm. Joe Biden took on great leadership and, uh, and, and delivered for the American people. So right now, of course, he's exploring this possibility. I think that if we continue to engage all across the country and, and ensure that he comes back with uh, majorities both in the House and the Senate, mm -hmm. and he's going to continue to be an excellent president and focus on the issues that still need to get done. And I want to ask you something, too. It's, this is a national problem. It's also a very, uh, very local problem here. That's affordable housing. Now, there was a new report that came out today. Uh, Red, Redfin, it's a national brokerage firm. They looked at the top 100 markets in the country, and they found that less than 30% of the homes that are for sale in those markets are categorized as what they would call affordable housing. Um, you know, I just wanted to ask you, you know, first of all, since you're exploring a ro uh, this role for Congress, what do you think Congress's role is in this affordable, cr uh, affordable housing? Absolutely. Some are calling it a crisis, but it's definitely an issue, particularly here in Arizona. Well, it's terrifying. You know, I've, I've seen in the district that I represent, people have been displaced from their homes. The uh, rent prices are skyrocketing. People can't get their own their their own housing their own housing, and it's incredibly important that we address this issue. Right now, we are having listening sessions mm -hmm. and talking to people in in the district, constituents, community leaders, and that is the top issue that mm -hmm. comes up. So I'm looking forward and figuring out solutions, working in Congress as well as uh, making sure that here at a state and local level, there the yeah. issue is addressed. I was going to say it you, is a crisis. I was going to say it's definitely something everybody is looking at down at the legislature, Absolutely. and I'm sure you're going to be continuing to look at that <laughs> while you do Absolutely. explore this possible run for office. So uh, Senator Raquel Toronto. Thank, Thank you, you very much for stopping by here today.